In this video, we're learning about eukaryotic cells, specifically plant, algal, and fungal cells. So we'll cover the structures in plant cells and their functions, and then also how plant cells compare to algal and fungal cells. Let's begin with the different structures in plant cells and their functions. Plant cells like this one have many organelles that are also found in animal cells. They both have a cell surface membrane, nucleus, which includes a nucleolus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, a Golgi apparatus, and then also free ribosomes as well. But plant cells also have some extra features that make them different from animal cells. These include a cell wall, chloroplasts, and a vacuole. Now, technically, the vacuole can sometimes be found in animal cells too, but in plant cells, vacuoles are particularly large and also permanent, whilst in animal cells, they're usually small and temporary. So now let's take a closer look at each of these special plant cell structures, starting with the cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid layer that surrounds the cell membrane. So this inner one is the cell membrane, and the outer one is the cell wall. It's made of cellulose, which is a tough, complex carbohydrate, and this hints at one of the main functions of the cell wall, which is that it helps give the plant cell its shape and provides support. Another key function is to prevent the cell from bursting when it takes in water, because the cell wall can withstand a high osmotic pressure, which basically just means a lot of water can be held within the cell without it bursting open like an animal cell would. The cell wall also contains tiny gaps or channels called plasma desmata, which allow materials to pass between neighboring plant cells so they can communicate and exchange nutrients. Next, let's look at chloroplasts, whose function is to carry out photosynthesis. The organelles themselves are green and they're found in cells throughout the green parts of the plant, like their leaves and stems. Each chloroplast is surrounded by a double membrane an outer membrane here, and an inner membrane here. Moving inwards, they've got a fluid called stroma, within which we find fluid-filled sacs called thylakoids. The thylakoids are then arranged into stacks called grana, and remember, a single one of these grana is called a granum. In some places, the grana are linked together by these little bridge-like extensions called lamellae, or one lamella, and we can also find starch grains in the stroma that store glucose once it's produced from photosynthesis. Now, like mitochondria, chloroplasts also have their own DNA and ribosomes, and this means they can produce some proteins that are needed for photosynthesis independently from the rest of the cell. The final structure we need to look at is the permanent vacuole, which we can see more clearly here. This is filled with cell sap, a fluid solution of salts, sugars, water, and other substances too. The vacuole is enclosed by a membrane called the tonoplast, which is selectively permeable, meaning it controls what enters and exits the vacuole. This hints at one of the vacuole's useful functions, which is to store nutrients. Another key function, though, is to help maintain pressure inside the cell, which is necessary to keep the plant rigid and prevent wilting. When a plant doesn't have enough water, it wilts, because there's not enough pressure in the vacuoles to keep the cells firm. Then to finish up, let's see how plant cells compare to algal and fungal cells by looking at some key features of plants, algae, and fungi side by side. Regarding the number of cells in each type of organism, whilst plants are always multicellular organisms, algae and fungi can be either multicellular or unicellular. We already know that plant cells have a cell wall that's made of cellulose, and they also have chloroplasts and a permanent vacuole. Now, like plant cells, algal cells also have a cell wall, which is sometimes made just of cellulose, but sometimes also contains glycoproteins as well as, or instead of, cellulose. Algae also have chloroplasts, but they're a different shape from those in plant cells, and algal cells have a permanent vacuole as well. Fungal cells are a little different because they've got cell walls, but they're made of chitin, not cellulose. And they also don't have chloroplasts because fungi don't perform photosynthesis. 
However, like plant and algal cells, fungal cells do have a large central vacuole. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.